Today we announce scholar partnerships with the Quincy Public Schools and with the Perkins School for the Blind. More about that later. But while sharing this with an alumna a few days ago, she commented that we had had a strong partnership with Perkins when she was at Leslie in the 70s, underscoring a return to our roots as we forge the future. I wanted to update you today, as usual, on each of our strategic areas of focus. As we've discussed before, we transitioned our academic offerings this year to a structure focused on our four major program areas, education, mental health, art and design, and liberal arts and business. In this structure, all of the programs in an area, say education, are grouped together, allowing easier navigation by students and more cross-program work. Each of these program areas then took the opportunity to do a curricular redesign to make it easier for students to complete their studies and to open up the university by building in the opportunity to take a suite of classes in another area. In fact, we received a letter from the state's Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, DESI, complimenting our education faculty on their proactive work, as well as the work of our registrar and advisors. And we have a new academic structure to pull our academic work under a one university model, allowing our students to easily avail themselves of the unique portfolio of programs we offer. Our interim provost, Diana Yamin, has more on these groups. Thanks so much, Janet. Hello, everyone. There were three things I'd like to review today. One is academic cabinet, then academic council, and academic coordinating council. Academic cabinet is just what it sounds like. It's the cabinet level leadership for academics. That includes the president, the interim provost, and the four vice provosts. What's very new this year is Academic Council. That includes all six of those individuals from Academic Cabinet, along with our Associate Provost. This group really looks at two different things in moving forward. One is projects, and the second is standard operating procedures. Let me give you an example. As we move toward one university, we had an honors program in two different areas of undergrad. What we need is, without losing any of the academic quality of that program, one honors program. So the individuals on that council are taking a look at that, they're talking to many of you as well as other people, and they'll come up with some recommendations. As they work on those projects and we make some decisions as a university, they'll also be writing up standard operating procedures so that we'll all know how things happen as well as how to make things happen. Third, and in some cases, in my opinion, almost most important, is our Academic Coordinating Council. So much work gets done at this level. So each one of our four areas, the School of Art and Design, Mental Health and Well-Being, Education, and Liberal Arts and Business, all have a liaison in this group. So work that needs to be done should go to that liaison. Please know that much of that work goes back to the group or to that team to make sure that we get everything done, um, to make sure that ebbs and flows and work flow work well, but also that team really is a leadership team. It may be overseen from my office, but what they start to notice is how we do things differently. For example, this past semester, they saw that we were actually sending out Dean's List notifications to our students in more than one way. They took a look at the two different ways we were doing it, took the best of both, and now, there's one procedure for Dean's List at Leslie, so students are notified even more quickly. I hope this overview has helped you, and now I'll turn it back to our colleagues. Thank you, Deanna. A second key part of our focus, as I mentioned earlier, has been partnerships. The concept here of scholar partnerships is to help attract and retain critically needed teachers, mental health professionals, and other professionals we educate by partnering with employers who hire them with three elements. First, a substantial increase in financial aid. Second, guaranteed internships with the partner on their acceptance to Leslie. And third, cohort support 
meaning that students enter as a specific partnership scholar in a networked group and have regular meetings about the contours of their profession. So in adding the two new education partners I mentioned earlier, the Quincy Public Schools and the Perkins School for the Blind, we're building on our partnerships with Riverside Community Care and with our own Threshold Lifelong Support Program. We're seeing double the number of applications for the programs these partnerships support. The Masters in Counseling and Psychology and the Masters in Social Work, respectively. And we expect to soon announce two new mental health partners. Another key area of focus that will help our graduates and employers in our community involves our quest to provide lifelong support for every student who receives a Leslie Diploma. This is a work in progress, but we've already made significant headway. Imagine, you're a new eighth grade teacher and it's been a tough day. You'd like to talk with someone who can understand your issues and provide some guidance. At Leslie, we have a vision. We're working on expanding our new teacher programs to support more teachers. And we're thinking about how we might support an alumni hotline. For former Leslie students, a calm voice and sage advice might be just a phone call away. As we work on this, we welcome your input. In art and design, we welcome back our alumni artists who want to utilize our state-of-the-art co-working space and technology to work on their professional projects. Our Threshold Lifelong Support Program provides life coaching for neurodiverse individuals in the Boston area. Started in January, we already have 20 individuals taking advantage of this program. And just a few days ago, we hosted an advisory board for Threshold to look together at how we help employers build their workforces by successfully employing the neurodiverse. We're also turning our attention to our Urban Scholars Initiative. We're working on developing a network of support and skill building to assist our urban scholars to be successful throughout their careers. As part of our efforts to simplify our university structure, we're building better systems and ways to improve the experience of the entire Leslie community. For example, all but 5% of our classes for the spring term had strong registration. In previous years, we've had to drop 25% of classes due to lack of enrollment. In fact, we've had 200 more registrations at this point in time compared to last year. In addition, our summer and fall enrollment numbers are looking good. Here's our Vice President of Enrollment Initiatives, Tom Engelhart. Thanks, Janet. Looking towards this summer, our graduate programs are showing strong interest. As Janet mentioned, the effects of our partnerships are clear. Counseling psychology is showing effect of the Riverside Scholars with 25 additional applications over this time last year, and more than a 70% increase in our deposits. The impact of our partnerships cannot be understated. In our undergraduate programs, we continue to experience an increase in applications and deposits. At our last student acceptance day, we had more than 350 students and guests walk through our hallways and around our campus. During the day, we secured double-digit new student enrollment deposits. We will keep you updated as the interest in Leslie continues to grow. Back to you, Janet. Thank you, Tom. Turning to the work being done in and around our campus as part of our campus plan, there has been much progress. Our Chief Operations Officer, Joanne Kasuth, gives us an update. Thanks, Janet. It's really starting to look like spring around here. We have some exciting updates on the campus plan for you. We've removed the majority of the scaffolding from the Reed and Burnham building on the exterior. So the students are gonna see a marked difference when they look out their window or look up the campus. One point of focus for the summer is going to be the Cheryl Library. Right now, the work that's gonna be done from May through August, during which the library is closed, is related to infrastructure. It is the mechanical rooms, the roof units, 
and systems that are gonna help us with heating and cooling across the entire South Campus. In January, when you're able to access the newly renovated spaces, you'll find things such as a green plant wall, a lounge with a actual fireplace that is water-based, as well as a makerspace and spaces for students to collaborate in group study. And one of the most exciting things is our space for esports, as well as our space for traditional gaming, like ping pong, foosball, pool tables, and electronic darts. So there's so much to come that you'll be excited to see, and I hope you'll all join us when it gets to January and we reopen Cheryl to show you all the things that we've done. Great work as always from the operations team. All of this work of course exists as part of a new financial model that will keep us on track and make sure we use our resources wisely. Right now we're closing out fiscal year 24 and preparing for fiscal year 25, which begins July 1st. Here's Michael Hoyle, our new CFO, who can talk a bit about how this year's fiscal budget process is coming together. Thank you, Janet. While I have only been here a couple of weeks, I am so thankful for the warm, gracious welcome I have received from the Leslie community. Having served as the CFO of LaSalle University and LaSalle Village for 11 years, and more recently for five years at Boston College High School, I am honored to bring my experience in financial stewardship to Leslie. In addition to getting acclimated to the campus, I have been primarily focused on the budget process. The FY25 budget process is underway and we expect to deliver a budget to the Board of Trustees at their meeting in June. Patrick Coogan is leading the academic and administrative budget managers in the budget development process striving to maintain non-personnel expenses at a steady level. We also remain vigilant to capture opportunities and initiatives that will increase revenue while also advancing the mission of the university and enhancing the student experience whenever possible. For the FY26 budget process, we will start that process much earlier, in December most likely, which will allow for more time for reflection, conversation, and a shared understanding of strategic priorities and how they relate to the budget. Beyond the balance sheets and the spreadsheets, I am just as excited about the human connections and the interactions that await. Each member of the Leslie community, students, faculty, staff, and alumni bring a unique perspective and voice it is through our collective efforts and the sharing of our diverse ideas and talents that we will continue to elevate Leslie to new heights. From the moment I stepped foot on campus, I felt an undeniable energy and an unwavering commitment to excellence. Leslie's dedication to nurturing the minds and spirits of its students resonates deeply with me and the impact of educators on my life from elementary school forward is not lost on me and I am thrilled to be part of a team that shares such noble aspirations. I'm immensely proud to be part of this extraordinary community and I look forward to working with all of you as we strive to meet Edith Leslie's determination to provide society with talented educators in a variety of disciplines. And now back to you, Janet. Thank you, Michael, and welcome. While many small colleges and universities are struggling with low enrollment and debt, Leslie is on track to be cost even by fiscal year 26, while building on our successful academic and student life redesign. I wanna end with three things. A very good idea brought forward by Betty Ann and Chris from SRAC. A word about commencement, and the announcement of an additional holiday. So first, I'm grateful to Betty Ann and Chris who forwarded the idea that we include in these videos the people who are working, sometimes behind the scenes, to improve our university infrastructure. Chris is one of them, and we thought it might be helpful for these videos to include spots for this, starting with Chris and the work that he and others have been doing to simplify and improve billing. And on commencement, we're just a few weeks away from pulling together our own family, our own Leslie community at the beautiful seaport, the majestic skyline of Boston as our backdrop. It will be the first time we acknowledge and celebrate all of our graduating students together. One ceremony on May 18th at 10 a.m. 
After the formal portion of the event, there will be a reception, also a new feature. So please bring your friends, family, and a camera to capture the moments. Our speaker, Cy Montgomery, has navigated the Amazon to find pink dolphins and examined the unique character of the octopus, of pigs, and of natural life everywhere finding joy and discovering the diversity of life around us. And finally, we are today announcing a President's Holiday, the Friday prior to Memorial Day, to celebrate all that you do for Leslie after we celebrate the accomplishments of our talented students at graduation. Commencement this year will definitely be quite a day.